But if you go back and look at the art of Rogue One, you can see like some of the very, very early drawings of Rogue uh, of K2. Looks quite different, I think, than what we eventually settled on. But the original idea was he was just, he was called, he was called a logistics droid, a rebel logistics droid. And originally it just basically looked like C-3PO, I think, but like skinned black, like black metal instead of gold metal, like shiny black metal. He didn't have much of a personality. And so I was looking at K2 and he was a little bit of a blank slate. I thought, how can I make him more interesting? And the main idea that I pitched was, and rather than being a rebel droid, let's have him being an Imperial droid that they captured and reprogrammed. Oh, nice. And now he works on the rebel side because I just felt like there was all kinds of interesting stuff that would come out of that. And in earlier versions of the story, there was there was more that we did with that. The idea that like a lot of the rebels didn't really trust him is like, you know, how yeah. do we know that he's like fully reprogrammed? He might still be Imperial yeah. underneath. They never really trusted him. He had kind of, you remember like when um, Russell Crowe scrapes off the mark of the Legion in Gladiator because yes. he's kind of renounced his masters. I was like this idea, there was an idea, there was a version, I think in the early, in the early part of this, in the early draft of the script that I did where he had scraped off all of his Imperial markings because he didn't want them on him anymore. But he had to go infiltrate the Imperial base, he had to paint them all back on, you know, to look like a freshened up Imperial droid, and he hated having to do it because he had renounced the Empire. The Where that all came from, from a character standpoint, was the idea that, like, Imperial droids aren't funny, right? They're just like, yes, master, like, they just kind of, because Imperial, right. the Imperials don't take any shit, like, you just do what you're told. And I always imagine they have these kind of behavioral restraining bolts attached to them that prevent them from being funny or talking back to their masters or whatever. But when the Rebels captured K2, I, I, I guess this is all just in my canon but it informed everything that I had wrote for that character that they had basically switched that they had flipped that switch to allow him to kind of have like full freedom of expression and they had kind of like taken the shackles off him essentially behaviorally and I kind of felt like K2 is like now that I can now that I can finally speak my mind I'm gonna I'm you're gonna get my opinion every time whether you want it or not and I so the idea of him being this kind of sarcastic and constantly kind of talking back to people and giving them grief it's like I remember there was there was a scene early in early in my draft where like Jin was like K2 can you move that crate for me he's like you move it you've got arms if you'll get yeah. for he's like he was just like constantly right. like giving everyone shit like if I, I don't have to do anything i'm free and he loved that 